Hey guys, I'm Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. <laughs> I cannot stay away from that corniness. Uh, Boo Radley is going to help me. Hi Boo. Boo Radley is going to help me with my, he says hi. He's going to help me with my review a little bit today. He kind of suffers from anxiety. So I don't know how much this is going to help. And his brother Tucker is right on the floor. So he's going crazy. Today I'm going to review Ghost at a Watchman by Harper Lee. So many people have commented on my videos wanting to know what I think of this book. What do you think of this book, boo? Aww. What? You do? You love this book? Oh, Tucker just came up here too, so we're in real trouble now. Anyway, um, you guys go down, go down. All right, so I'm gonna review Ghost at a Watchman today. How can we possibly talk about Ghost at a Watchman without first talking about To Kill a Mockingbird? And I just have to tell you, like, I have been obsessed with this book and this movie since I was, like, a kid. I first watched the movie with my mom, To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, and then, I mean, we watched it every year. Indiana, where I'm from, has great falls and autumns. It reminds me of the end scene of the movie of To Kill a Mockingbird. I love the movie. I love the play. I love the soundtrack. I love the book. I love everything about this. I have hunted down the actors that played the parts in the movies. No. Mary Badham, who played Scout, she lectures about... Boo Radley! She lectures about uh, To Kill a Mockingbird around the country now, and she's just the coolest thing. And, you know, Harper Lee died last year, so it's really kind of a sad thing. Was it last year? I think it was last year or this year. I think it was last year. Um, and I was just really devastated because it was, of course, my dream to meet her at some point, which never happened. Um, when Ghost at a Watchman came out, there was quite the controversy around it because supposedly this book was found and never meant to be published by Harper Lee, supposedly. So the person that had the rights to this book supposedly published it without Harper Lee's consent. Now, I don't know how true that is. I will be honest with you. I didn't really care. I was like, are you kidding me that there is another book out there about Scout and Jim and Dill and I am not going to read it? Are you kidding me that I'm going to find out if Atticus Finch, what happened to him? I mean, everybody in the world was talking about how Atticus Finch was um, an, a racist from this book. So I had to read this book. So let me tell you, I got this book the day it came out. I think I pre-ordered it, actually. I did pre-order it. So the book was coming in the mail, and I was like, I cannot wait. And then one of my friends messaged me and said, um, this kid that I, I know, and he's in college, and real political and really cool, and he was like, I'm going to go get it tomorrow morning at Barnes & Noble. And I was like, I'm going to get it tomorrow morning at Barnes & Noble. But I had already pre-ordered my copy, so guess what I did? I, at midnight, got on Audible, and I listened to the whole thing narrated by Reese Witherspoon, and it tore me up, okay? Which you know for me is like, what does that chick say on uh, <laughs> uh, So You Think You Can Dance? She's like, I'm on the gravy train or whatever. Oh my God. If my husband was here, he would die because he know he loves that woman, that Mary woman. She cracks me up. But whenever she likes it, she's like, ah! Anyway, so you know when I say a book wore me out, that means like it was awesome. I loved it so much. Can I do this? I was never meant to be a model. <laughs> Can you tell? Anyway, um, I loved this book so much. And I loved it in a way that I didn't expect to. Um, and this, there's going to be a few spoilers in this book. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so for me, I'll tell you what turned me away. Was when you open the book, there is no mention of Scout. Okay, it, She is Jean Louise. And she is an adult living in New York City at the time that this book opens. And she's coming back home to visit her dad and make them. And um, they don't explain to you why and any of that kind of stuff. But she's a grown woman, like talks about like sexuality and relationships. And it's really hard to envision Scout that way. So I'll tell you what happens. Okay, so I'm reading along or I'm listening along in the car. Da, 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 da. And if you want to listen to a great audible narration, Reese Witherspoon is fantastic in this book. I mean, of this book. Anyway, so I'm like into it and I just looked up to see what page it's on because I can remember in the narration, it was like five minutes into it. I, Harper Lee, there are some things that you don't change, okay? There are some worlds you don't mess with. This is like if in book two, you would have killed Harry Potter in the Harry Potter series. Like, there, what? What are you doing? On page 13, and I'm going to ruin this for you, okay? She says in the top sentence, da 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 I'm not really going to read it for you. But she kills off a main character on page 13. A main character. 
character. I was devastated, okay? And you know it's not Scout, and you know it's not Atticus, so go and figure the rest. But I wanted them all to live. I mean, Calpurnia, and Jim, and Dill, and the little boy with the, the wanton pancake syrup. I mean, all of it, right? Boo Radley. And I will tell you one thing, if you're going to read this book because you are in love with Boo Radley as a heroic character, which I am, and I think Boo Radley is just, um, you know, and it, it's, it's, I think Boo Radley, what am I trying to say, besides being my dog, is um, an example of just innocence of the world. And I love who he is. Not mentioned one time in this book. Boo Radley, and it, that's book! Oh, we don't hurt books. We don't hurt books. <laughs> I actually have two copies of this book now, so if somebody wants this one. Anyway, I'm not going to hold this book up through the whole thing. I also have the movie here, if you'd like to see. Um, Gregory Peck, Kill a Mockingbird, 50th Anniversary Edition. I love this movie. And then there's also a documentary called Hey Boo, and you can get it on Netflix. It's incredible. But anyway, first of all, let me dispel some truths about this to you. Number one, people want to say that Atticus Finch is a racist in this book, okay? Um... I have known some racists in my time, and Atticus Finch is no racist in this book. What Atticus Finch is at the time that this book came out, okay, or when the time of this book was supposedly supposed to be, um, is a realist. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to accomplish some things in the town that he lives in. And by having to do that, he has to side with some people that are racist. And when you read the book, if you're not reading for it, if you're reading it because you don't want to believe that Atticus Finch is a racist, you'll see what I'm saying because that's how I went into it. I was like, I can't believe Atticus Finch is a racist. I mean, like, I grew up wanting to be Atticus Finch. I mean, he is like one of the greatest role model characters of our entire generation, you know? And so I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, and I don't think that's what her intention was. I don't think it was. And I will tell you what's interesting is, having grown up with To Kill a Mockingbird and that story and the idolization of Atticus Finch and, and you know, Scout looking up to Atticus Finch and the whole idea of how the book title came out, To Kill a Mockingbird, you know, that it's a sin to kill a mockingbird because all they do for us is sing and make beautiful music. Uh, as I'm looking over here at my dog who is playing in his bed, and he's so sweet and innocent. Oh, Boo Radley. But anyway, and then reading this book today where she sees Atticus in a completely different light, and she gets very, very angry at Atticus in the book. And um, for me, what it is, is it's, you know, it's um, feet of clay. When you grow up and you realize that your parents and the people that were role models in your life are no longer... I mean, I could almost start crying about this. This is kind of the story of my dad and I, to some degree, that they are still great people, but they're not these idols that we made them out to be when we were uh, little kids. And that's really what the book is about. It's about her new relationship with Atticus. It's about Jean Louise becoming a woman and not being Scout anymore. And let me just tell you something right now, that everybody says that this book was the book that came first before To Kill a Mockingbird, and that may be true. When you read the book, there are some beautiful, beautiful images where she goes back and she talks about uh, she and Dylan, um, Jim, as children. And there are some hilarious stories in here. There's a whole part about where they have this revival. <laughs> it is hilarious and it makes me miss To Kill Mockingbird. But if that's the case, then what I think happened was her publisher said, I want you to take those pieces where you wrote about them as children and I want you to write that book because that's really what To Kill Mockingbird is. And this book could be a sequel. I mean, it is perfectly a sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird. And it's really about who, what her relationship is with uh, Atticus today. I think it's done beautifully. I think it is um, written beautifully. It is Harper Lee's finest. And I think it is even better than To Kill a Mockingbird, honestly. And I don't want to ruin it for you, but when you read the last sentence of this book and you look at it, and I just was looking at it before I came here and I started, I started crying because I just love everything about To Kill a Mockingbird. I love the hominess and the innocence and the, the whole idea of the right of being a better person in our lives. And, you know, isn't that what life is about? I mean, life isn't about fame or money. And it's about spending time with the people that are important to you and how they shape us in our world. Can you see us? I'm like a mess. Anyway, when I went back right now and I was looking for that page in the chapter and I went back and I went around to the last paragraph and I read the last sentence of this book. It is so profound. I mean, this book is so beautiful. And what she discovers through the course of this book is incredible. It is so good. I would give it a thousand stars if I could. <laughs> Obviously, I'm bawling my eyes out. It's me up! Anyway, 
So I love this book. You should definitely read it. People that say that they're not going to read it because of all the pub publication BS. I can't imagine that Harper Lee would not have wanted this book to get out. I don't know why she wouldn't have. It's beautiful. I think she was maybe afraid of what people's misconceptions of Atticus Finch would be. And for me, as a true lover of To Kill a Mockingbird and of that town and of that time, it never disappointed. I hope you enjoyed my review and come back for more. I love you. Bye.